easy sweater tutorial. If you want to take some awesome fabric, spend a little time with it, and turn it into ba bam a new sweater, then this is the video for you. Hi, I'm Carmetta, and today I'm going to show you how to take your favorite sweatshirt, turn it into a pattern, and sew yourself a new one. To get started, you'll want your sweatshirt, some wrapping paper or other big pieces of paper to trace your sweatshirt onto to make a pattern, some scissors to cut it out, and a marker, pen, or pencil to write on your paper as you trace around your sweater. I also like to have one of these clear rulers around. This one's by Dritz, and it has holes in it so that I can easily stick my marker in it and trace the seam allowance as I go. I'll show you how to do that as we get started. Now the sweater that I'm using has a really basic sleeve. It's not a raglan sweater. It has um, a nice long shoulder piece on the bodice and then the sleeve is attached. I find that this is a little bit easier to sew for your first time around. So if you have one like this, go ahead and pull it out. Now what we're gonna do is lay out our wrapping paper and then we'll start tracing our pattern paper. Here I am, I am tracing the back of the sweater right now, trying to make sure I follow the curve of the sleeve as well as I can. Because I'm gonna cut this on the fold, I only need to trace half of it. Try to make your lines as straight as possible. I am marking the fold, also the direction of stretch so I know which way to cut my fabric. I label it as the back so I know it's the back piece. And then here I'm adding a half inch seam allowance using that special ruler all the way around every area where I'm going to sew or create another seam. Now as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the front bodice. And the front is actually a little bit long, or no, shorter, sorry, it's a little bit shorter than the back, so this piece will be about two inches shorter than the back bodice. And again, I'm trying to be careful tracing the curve of the underarm, and then marking that it's the front, the direction of the stretch, where I'd fold it, and of course, adding a seam allowance everywhere where I'm going to create a seam. Now, it's really important that you write what your seam allowance is, That'll help you as you're sewing on your sewing machine to know where to position the needle. Now here I'm doing the sleeve and I wanted to check and make sure that it was symmetrical on both sides so that I knew if I could cut it on the fold or not. So I'm just flipping it over and tracing it to see if it's symmetrical and it is. So I'll go ahead and cut it on the fold. I'm marking the stretch again. I'm marking that it's the sleeve and that I need to cut too. Now here's the cuffs and the cuffs you're also going to cut on the fold because you fold it in half before you sew it on. So I'm marking the fold area and the cuff. For the neckband, I traced all the way around the neckband and then I created a two inch wide neckband. And I always guess and check because neckbands are kind of hard to figure out. So I, I did it just a little bit shorter than the original neckband. Now that I've done all of these, I have the front bodice, the back bodice, the sleeve piece, which you'll cut out twice, the neckband, and then the cuff piece, which you will also cut out twice. We are working with stretchy fabric and stretchy fabric is the best because it's super forgiving so it doesn't um, suddenly not fit if your measurements are a little bit off it'll usually work out you want to be the best that you can but then just leave the rest of the work to the amazing stretch factor of your sweater fabric now just remember we have directions of stretch okay this way is obviously way stretchier than this way now some of you might have fabric that's just as stretchy in both directions, but I think generally speaking, sweat shirt fabric is usually stretchier in one direction than in the other. So you wanna make sure that stretch is going across your body instead of up and down, because, well, let's just put it this way. I once made a swimsuit without <laughs> realizing that it wasn't full way stretch, and the stretch was going up and down instead of across my body, so I could barely put it on let alone swim in it. So don't let that be you. Make sure you have the stretch going in the right direction. And that's why on every single piece, I wrote which direction the stretch is going in. Now, a good way to make sure that your fabric will work for your sweater pattern is to compare your sweatshirt material, the one that you made your pattern out of, with the material you're gonna sew. And if it's about the same level of stretchiness, you're probably good to go. This fabric is called Hatchy in the US. In the UK, it's pronounced Hache. I'll show you, I'll show you fabric, know, something like that. And um, it's a little bit harder to work with as far as sweatshirt material goes because it's slippery, but it's light and soft and amazing, so I'm gonna use it today. And then this is from Raspberry Creek Fabrics, again, it's a local company and they print right here in Utah, so I love using their stuff. We'll go ahead and get, and get started with cutting out our fabric. And I'm gonna recommend that you use a rotary cutter if you have one, and then some weights so that your fabric doesn't move around while you're cutting it. Obviously nothing too exciting when you cut out your fabric. 
just be super careful that you fold where you need to have it folded and that you're following the right direction of stretch. As long as you're doing that, you should be fine. Overall for this sweater, I think I used just under about two yards of fabric, maybe like a yard and three quarters. These are all my pieces. You have the front bodice, the back bodice, the sleeve pieces, two cuff sleeves, and your neckband. Once those are all cut, we're ready to start with the sewing process. The first thing we're gonna do is take our front bodice piece, lay it on top of our back bodice piece with the right sides together. Right sides just means the sides that you want on the outside when you're wearing it. So right now, since we're sewing it, we want them on the inside. We're gonna go ahead and put the shoulder pieces together like this, and then pin or clip them so they don't slide around. So if you're new to sewing and you don't know what the seam allowance is, all that is is a fancy way of saying how far you're gonna sew your seam from the edge of the fabric. So if this is my edge, and if I'm doing a half inch seam allowance, then I'm gonna sew my seam a half inch away from this edge. And then of course, once you sew it, you have some raw edge left and you can trim that, you can use pinking shears, you can serge it, or you can zigzag over it. There's a ton of different ways to finish it. But that's just what the seam allowance is if you don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this other shoulder seam. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take it upstairs because believe it or not, I sew in my craft room, but I cut in my kitchen. Okay, I totally <laughs> almost forgot to say. Make sure you're using a stretch needle or a ballpoint needle. The difference between those is that stretch needles are more for like swimsuit fabric or dance apparel, but it will work for this as well. You just want something that's going to separate the knit fibers instead of trying to tear through them, which is what a universal needle would do. So switch out your needle and let's get started. So my settings are a stretch, well, just a zigzag stitch, which most machines should have. And then I changed it to 2.0 instead of 1.4. So I'm gonna go ahead and Stitch, back stitch, go to the end, and then back stitch again. Okay, this is what it looked like when I pulled it off. Let me see if I can. There we go. Now it's focusing a little bit better. Um, I'm using a contrasting thread so that you can see what it looks like. Zigzags are good because it stretches with the fabric. If you use a straight stitch, as soon as there's any stretch on this, it will rip your seam. So you don't want that to happen. The next thing we're going to do is called stay stitching, and what that is is just sewing around the neckline just on one layer of fabric to keep it from getting distorted before we have a chance to add the neckband. So we're gonna do that just with a straight stitch. You could do it with a zigzag stitch too. I don't care if the seam pops out later, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it with a straight stitch and just sew around that circle. Okay, so this is what that stay stitching looks like. I did press my seams open before I um, went around and stay stitched it. Okay, now that we've sewn our shoulder seams together, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open them up so here's our two shoulder seams. And then we're gonna place our sleeve piece into that curve. So here's the curve right here between the shoulder seams and the sleeve. We're gonna make sure that the right sides are facing and we're gonna pin that in. So I've already kind of done that on this side right here. So here's this curve. We're gonna sew it on both sides and then we're going to put the wrong sides together with the sleeve out and we're gonna sew from the edge of the sleeve all the way down to the edge of the side of the bodice pieces. So now if your sweatshirt's like mine and the bottom hem is shorter for the front than the back, you'll just go ahead and go down, leaving maybe about two or three inches on the bottom. And then after you sew that and you stop and you backstitch, we'll fold it in and hem each side so that it has a clean seam line. I just finished sewing the curve of the sleeve and when I was done, I realized that my sleeve piece was just a little bit bigger than the curve of my bodice, which is not a big deal. So I just cut this extra piece from the sleeve and I'll just throw it away and we're good to go. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it to be close. So now that that's gone, I'm gonna go ahead and sew from here all the way down the sides, stopping about maybe here-ish. You cut, no, probably here. I'll probably stop here because the back, like my original sweater, is longer than the front. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll keep going. Okay, our next step is to get our neckband and our cuffs ready. So we're just gonna fold it in half long ways and sew down the raw edge. Oh, this is my raw edge, sorry. We're gonna sew right here and then here's the cuff. We fold it in half, we're gonna sew down this way and then we're gonna fold each one in half after that. So I'll show you what they look like in just a minute. 
Once those raw edges are sewn, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it so the right sides are facing out. And I'm gonna align the seam up so that it meets perfectly at the edge. And then I'm gonna take the raw edges and I'm gonna clip them secure so that they don't slide around. And this is a great idea to press it to to make it more secure. So you do it with both cuffs and then with the neck band. And on this neck band, I made sure to mark each quarter so that I know how far to stretch it when I pin it and sew it to the sweater. So I've marked the quarters on the neck band. To do the on the neck band of the sweater, I pull it like this so I have the center front and the center back. So I put a red clip on each of those and then I'm gonna stretch it the opposite direction and get the other quarters so that it's perfectly spaced out. And I'm gonna pin those or clip them as well. And once that is all done, I simply align the neck band clips to where the clips are on the actual sweater neckline. I will clip them in place and then as I sew it, you want all the raw edges together by the way, raw edges together, and when I sew it, I will use those as guides to see how far I need to stretch my neckband as I sew it. The red one's up with the red ones. So we're going to flip this so the raw edge is facing up. So the raw edge of our neckline is here. The raw edge of our neckband is also up. And we will match the back seam to the center back like this and clip it. Now we're going to go ahead and match these up and clip it and these up right here and clip it and this up right here. Now you want the neckband to be smaller than the neckline because you want to kind of hold it in. If it's bigger, it's going to be all wonky and not lay flat. So we're going to go ahead and I like to baste it first with a straight stitch on my longest stitch length so that I can check it. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stretching the neck band while I sew it onto the neckline without stretching the neckline, which is why it's helpful to have that stay stitching there. So I'll be stretching this as it sews to make it fit in that area. So just between each quarter area, stretching the neck band so that it fits. I'm gonna go ahead and sew that now and we'll see how it turns out. Okay. When working with cuffs and neck bands, it's nice to take off this part of your machine so that you can maneuver around it a little bit easier. So here's the neckline. As you can tell, it's just a little bit loose. I mean, I haven't pressed it or top stitched it because I just basted it, but what I'm gonna do is seam rip it then remove like two or three inches from it and do this whole process again to make it fit tighter. Okay, I just seam ripped this off. Luckily, I just basted it with a really wide stitch, so it was super easy to take off. That's why I always baste it, because you never know how many times you're gonna need to do to get it right. So what I'm gonna do now is open it back up and find where that seam is, the original seam from when I closed it. Let's see, looks like it's right here. And then I'm just going to sew. It's kinda hard because I'm holding the camera in one hand. There you go. I'm going to sew it in a little bit further, maybe like here. So I take it in about, let's see. If I do an inch and a half, it'll take it in about three inches altogether and just make it a little bit tighter of a neckline. So I'll go ahead and try that now. I just repinned it after sewing it and we'll see if this stretches just a little bit better, making the neckline a little bit tighter and lay a little bit flatter. Okay, so I did it again. This time it's a little bit tighter. It ended up becoming a shorter neck band because the edges kind of frayed and rolled up, so I had to keep pulling it down. And it's a little bit wrinkled because I still have my stay stitching right here. I wonder if you can, let's see if I can focus it, sorry. Anyway, I still have my stay stitching on here, so I'm just going to pick that out and then I'll press it. And then you could either leave it like that or you can top stitch over it if you want to make it better. Now onto the cuffs. Here's my sleeve. Notice that it is right side out. I'm gonna grab my cuff piece, make sure that the raw edges are clipped in place, and then I'm gonna align the sleeve raw edges with the cuff raw edges. I'm just stick that cuff right over the sleeve, take my clips and pin them together. You can also do the trick that I did on the neck band where I clipped every quarter of the circumference of the band to every quarter of the circumference of the sleeve so that it's even. You just wanna stretch the cuff a little bit as you sew it on. I always baste this first as well. That's where you use your longest stitch length so that if you don't like the fit, you can change it. 
This is what it looks like when it's done. A little bit loose, but I liked the way it fit, so I'm just gonna stick with it. Now for the bottom, this is a magic trick I call hem tape, and you lay it on the bottom, and you're gonna fold your fabric up like this. Kinda hard to do with one hand, because I'm filming. But this is what it looks like after it's ironed, and then I clip it just to stabilize it a little bit more. Here's what it looks like from the right side. And it already creates a really nice, beautiful hem, but I do like to sew over it just to be extra secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around the bottom. Uh, I do have a slit on the side, so I'll sew up and around that slit right here. And then I'm gonna, I am using a zigzag stitch so that it will stretch if needed. Here I am using my machine, going for the zigzag stitch. It's so easy to sew over this hem tape because it stabilizes your fabric and gives you a really beautiful, crisp finish. That's what it looks like. Now that my hem is done, I'm completely done with this sweater. Overall, I really like how it turned out, and I also just want to give a shout out to my eight-year-old who filmed this for me. Thanks, bud. You're awesome. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, and if you like this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and follow along for more.